Thalorath salvage cruiser, seeker of truth, cut through the void of space, its sleek hull glinting against the backdrop of distant stars. On the command deck, Captain Riel stood with an air of focused intensity. His compound eyes scanned the holographic display, which flickered with the image of an ancient wreckage. This was not just any derelict ship. It was a human battleship, a relic from a long-lost civilization. Captain, we're approaching the coordinates, said Olin, the science officer, his voice steady. Initial scans indicate significant energy anomalies. Prepare to bring us closer, Riel ordered, his antennae twitching with anticipation. I want detailed scans of that wreckage. The seeker glided closer to the skeletal remains of the human battleship. The ship's exterior, primitive in design, was a stark contrast to the advanced technology the Lorath were used to. Yet, it exuded a sense of awe and mystery, as if it held secrets waiting to be uncovered. Energy readings are off the charts, Olin reported. There's something unusual about this ship, Captain. It's not just a relic, Riel nodded. Prepare a boarding party. I want to know what's inside that ship. The crew moved with practiced efficiency. Within minutes, a team of Lorath explorers, clad in protective suits, was ready to board the ancient vessel. Riel watched as they materialized onto the wreckage, their suits crackling with static as they adjusted to the ship's ancient energy field. Be cautious, Riel instructed over the comms. Report anything unusual immediately. The boarding party moved through the eerie corridors of the battleship, their footsteps echoing against the warped metal. The ship's interior was a haunting testament to a bygone era, with blasted consoles and skeletal command chairs hinting at a once mighty war machine. Captain, we found something, came the voice of Kez, the first officer. It's a schematic of a hyperdrive, but it's unlike anything we've ever seen. Riel's eyes widened. Send the data back to the Seeker. I want a full analysis. Back on the Seeker, Olin worked furiously to analyze the data. The schematic displayed a hyperdrive with theoretical energy yields that defied Lorath understanding. It was a technological marvel, suggesting a level of advancement that Riel could hardly fathom. This can't be right, Olin murmured, his antennae twitching in disbelief. Pre-warp civilization with this level of technology? It's generations beyond our own. Riel's mandibles clicked in thought. Humans, he whispered the name echoing through Lorath histories as a race long considered technologically stunted and vanished from the galactic stage. Could this be a remnant of their former glory? As the boarding party continued their exploration, they uncovered more evidence of advanced human technology. Weapon systems, targeting ranges, and power generation methods all pointed to a civilization that had reached remarkable heights before its fall. Captain, we've found a data core. Kez reported. It's damaged, but it might contain valuable information. Bring it back, Riel ordered. I want to see everything we can recover. The data core, a sliver of black metal crisscrossed with hairline fractures, seemed almost worthless at first glance. But to Riel, it was a treasure trove of potential knowledge. He secluded himself in his quarters, poring over the fragmented data with relentless focus. Images materialized on his hollow display, Star charts of unfamiliar systems, cryptic log entries filled with obsolete technical jargon. Among the debris, there were gems, FTL jump coordinates and traces of AI subroutines that hinted at a sophisticated level of artificial intelligence. Olin, look at this, Riel called out. These coordinates match against known star charts. This ship traveled further than any documented Lorath expansion. Olin's eyes widened as he examined the data. This is incredible, Captain. We've barely scratched the surface of what this ship can teach us. Riel felt a mix of excitement and unease. The human technology was a double-edged sword, an opportunity to leapfrog Lorath advancements, but also a reminder of their own limitations. As he studied the schematic again, the elegant lines and sheer power of the hyperdrive filled him with a sense of wonder and envy. This changes everything, Riel whispered to himself. We have to understand what happened to the humans and what this technology can mean for us. The discovery of the ancient human battleship was just the beginning. Riel knew that the journey ahead would be fraught with challenges and revelations, but he was ready to face them, driven by the relentless pursuit of knowledge that defined the Lorath civilization. Prepare for further analysis, Riel ordered, his voice firm. We're just getting started. Captain Riel sat at his workstation, 
his eyes locked on the flickering hollow display. The data core from the ancient human battleship was a fragmented puzzle, but each piece was a potential breakthrough. He sifted through star charts, log entries, and technical schematics determined to uncover the secrets buried within. Olin, look at this, Riel called to his science officer. These star charts show systems we've never documented. Olin peered over Riel's shoulder, his antennae twitching with curiosity. Uncharted systems, this ship traveled far beyond our known boundaries. If these coordinates are accurate, we could expand our understanding of the galaxy significantly. Riel nodded. There's more. These AI subroutines are unlike anything we've seen. They're adaptive, almost sentient. Olin's eyes widened. Incredible. This could revolutionize our own AI protocols. Determined to share their findings, Riel prepared a report for the Lorath High Council. The Council, a body of esteemed scholars and leaders, would need to understand the significance of this discovery. However, Riel knew convincing them would be a challenge. The Seeker docked at Lorath Prime, and Riel, accompanied by Olin and First Officer Kez, made their way to the Council Chambers. The grandeur of the hall, with its high ceilings and intricate carvings, was a testament to Lorath's dedication to knowledge and history. Captain Riel, you may present your findings, Arch Scholar Elin said, her tone both curious and skeptical. Riel stepped forward, activating the hollow display. Esteemed Council members, our mission to the Star Cluster led to the discovery of an ancient human battleship. This vessel contains advanced technology far beyond our current capabilities. We have found hyperdrive schematics, AI subroutines, and star charts that could redefine our understanding of the galaxy. The hollow display projected the star charts and hyperdrive schematics. The council members leaned forward, their compound eyes scrutinizing the data. Arch scholar Elin's antennae twitched. These designs are indeed impressive, Captain, but how can we be certain of their authenticity? Human civilization was known to be technologically stunted before their disappearance. Olin stepped in. With respect, Arch Scholar, the energy readings and the complexity of the schematics indicate otherwise. This hyperdrive design alone could revolutionize our space travel. A murmur of interest ran through the Council, but skepticism lingered. We will need to conduct our own analysis, Elin declared. Our scholars will examine the data thoroughly. Days turned into weeks as the Council scholars pored over the data. Riel and his team were relegated to the sidelines, their findings scrutinized and questioned. Frustration mounted as the Council seemed more focused on disproving their work than exploring its potential. This is absurd, Kez muttered to Riel. They're ignoring the evidence right in front of them. Riel's mandibles clicked in frustration. We need to find a way to prove the significance of these findings. If only they could see what we've seen. Driven by desperation, Riel decided to take matters into his own hands. Late one night, he isolated a fragment of the navigation code from the human data core. With Olin's assistance, he bypassed the Seeker's safety protocols and integrated the ancient commands into their system. Are you sure about this, Captain? Olin asked, his voice tinged with concern. Riel nodded. We need to prove the authenticity of this data. If this works, we'll have undeniable evidence. The ship's engines hummed to life, the ancient commands interfacing with the Seeker's systems. The navigation console projected a star system, pinpointing a set of coordinates from the human data core. We've done it, Riel said, a mix of relief and excitement in his voice. Prepare for an FTL jump to these coordinates, Olin's eyes widened. An unauthorized jump? The Council will never approve. They won't need to, Riel replied firmly. This is our only chance to validate our findings. Prepare the crew. As the Seeker readied for the jump, Riel couldn't shake a sense of unease. They were about to venture into unknown space, relying on the data from a civilization long gone. The stakes were high, but the potential rewards were immense. Initiate the jump, Riel ordered. The ship lurched forward, entering the swirling vortex of hyperspace. The experience was disorienting, a blend of light and motion that felt both familiar and alien. When the Seeker emerged into normal space, the view before them was breathtaking. A colossal ring world dominated the star system, its scale and complexity beyond anything they had imagined. Captain, this is incredible, Olin said, his voice filled with awe. We've found something extraordinary. Riel stared at the ring world, a mix of excitement and apprehension coursing through him. This is just the beginning. We need to explore and understand what we found. The discovery of the ring world was a turning point, 
a moment that would redefine their mission and challenge their understanding of the galaxy. But as Riel looked out at the vast structure, he knew their journey was far from over. The bridge of the Seeker of Truth buzzed with a tense energy. Captain Riel stood at the center, overseeing final preparations for the unauthorized FTL jump. He knew the risks, but the potential rewards outweighed them. The ring world they had discovered was too significant to ignore. Olin, are we ready? Riel asked, his voice steady but tinged with urgency. Olin nodded, his eyes fixed on the console. All systems are green. The coordinates from the human data core are locked in. The crew is prepared, though there's some apprehension. Riel glanced around at his crew, seeing a mix of determination and anxiety. We need to prove the validity of our findings. This jump is essential. Begin the countdown. The bridge lights dimmed as the FTL drive powered up. A low hum resonated through the ship, growing in intensity. The crew braced themselves for the jump, knowing they were about to venture into uncharted territory. FTL jump in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, initiate, Olin commanded. The seeker lurched forward, the stars outside the viewport stretching into streaks of light as the ship entered the swirling vortex of hyperspace. The sensation was disorienting, a blend of light and motion that felt both familiar and alien. Rael gripped the armrest of his chair, his eyes fixed on the viewscreen. We're in hyperspace, Olin reported. Estimated travel time, 10 minutes. The bridge was silent, except for the hum of the engines and the occasional beep of control panels. Riel's mind raced with possibilities. They were relying on data from a long-lost civilization, trusting that the coordinates would lead them to something extraordinary. Captain, do you think we'll find another structure like the Ring World? asked Kez, the first officer. It's possible, Riel replied. But we need to be prepared for anything. This is uncharted space. We don't know what we'll encounter. Minutes passed, feeling like hours, until the Seeker finally exited hyperspace. The ship decelerated smoothly, and the viewscreen displayed their new location. Before them was a breathtaking vista, a colossal ring world, even larger and more complex than the one they had found before. By the ancients, Olin whispered, it's magnificent. Riel stood, his eyes wide with awe. Begin detailed scans. We need to understand what we're looking at. The crew worked diligently, scanning the ring world and its surroundings. The structure was a marvel of engineering, with vast cities, intricate networks, and what appeared to be docking stations for ships of immense size. Captain, I'm picking up residual energy readings, Olan reported. This ring world is still partially operational. Reel's antennae twitched with excitement. This could be a pivotal moment for us. Prepare a landing team. We need to explore the surface. Kez coordinated the team, selecting members with the necessary expertise for a comprehensive survey. As they prepared to descend, the ship's sensors picked up an unexpected signal. Captain, we're receiving a transmission, Olin said, his voice tense. It's in a language we don't recognize, Riel frowned. Can you isolate and translate it? I'll do my best, Olin replied, working quickly to decode the message. After a few moments, a rough translation appeared on the console. Attention, unidentified vessel. You have entered restricted space. Identify yourselves immediately. Who could be sending this? Kez wondered aloud. Riel's mind raced. Another civilization, perhaps. One that has claimed this ring world. We need to proceed with caution. Open a channel. The comms crackled to life. This is Captain Riel of the Lorath Salvage Cruiser Seeker of Truth. We are here on a mission of exploration and mean no harm. There was a pause before a response came through. Lorath Vessel, this is Commander Tell of the Jar Dominion. You are trespassing in our territory. State your purpose. Riel exchanged a glance with Kez. We discovered coordinates in ancient human data. Our intent is purely scientific. Commander Tell's tone was firm. You are in possession of human artifacts. This is highly sensitive information. You will transfer all data to us immediately and prepare to leave this system. Riel's mandibles clicked in frustration. We cannot comply. This technology is crucial for our understanding and advancement. Then you leave us no choice, Tell replied. Prepare to be boarded. The line went dead. Riel turned to his officers. Prepare for defensive measures. We may need to hold our ground. The crew moved swiftly, securing the ship and readying for potential conflict. Riel felt the weight of his decision pressing down on him. They had ventured into the unknown, 
and now faced a formidable adversary. As the jar ships approached, the tension on the Seeker's bridge was palpable. Riel knew they were at a critical juncture. Their next actions would determine the fate of their mission, and perhaps their lives. The Seeker of Truth's bridge was a hive of controlled chaos. Captain Riel stood at the center, his eyes fixed on the approaching jar ships. The Jar were known for their aggressive territorial claims and formidable technology. Riel knew this confrontation could escalate quickly. Shields up, prepare for evasive maneuvers, Riel commanded, his voice steady. Olin monitored the tactical display. Three Jar ships closing in, Captain. They're heavily armed. Open a channel to the lead ship, Riel ordered. The comms officer nodded, and a moment later, Commander Tell's face appeared on the view screen, his expression stern. Lorath Vessel, you are in violation of Jar space. Surrender the human artifacts and leave immediately. Commander Tell, we have no intention of surrendering our findings, Riel replied firmly. Our mission is peaceful and scientific. We request permission to continue our research. Tell's eyes narrowed. Peaceful or not, you are trespassing. This is your final warning. Riel knew they were at an impasse. The Jar would not back down and neither could he. Prepare for defensive action, he ordered, cutting the comms. The Jar ships began to circle, their weapon systems locking onto the Seeker. Riel's crew worked with precision, readying the ship for battle. Target their weapon systems, Riel instructed. We need to disable them without causing a full-scale conflict. Understood, Captain, Kez acknowledged. Targeting now. The Seeker's weapons fired, striking one of the Jar ships and causing its shields to flicker. The Jar responded with a barrage of plasma bolts, rocking the Seeker. Shields holding at 70%, Olin reported. We can't sustain this for long. Riel clenched his mandibles. Focus fire on their lead ship. We need to create an opening to escape. As the battle intensified, the Seeker maneuvered deftly, dodging incoming fire and retaliating with precision strikes. The Jar ships pressed their advantage, but Riel's tactical acumen kept them at bay. Captain, their lead ship's shields are weakening, Olan said, his eyes fixed on the display. We have an opportunity. Fire all forward weapons, Riel ordered. Disable their engines. The Seeker's forward batteries unleashed a torrent of energy, striking the Jar lead ship and causing a cascade of explosions along its hull. The ship veered off course, its engines sputtering. Direct hit. Their engines are offline, Kez reported. Good work, Riel said. Now let's get out of here. Set a course for the nearest safe system and engage at maximum speed. As the Seeker began its escape, a new signal appeared on the sensors. Captain... I'm detecting a massive energy buildup in the ring world, Olin said urgently. Riel's eyes widened. What could be causing that? Olin worked quickly to analyze the data. It looks like a defensive mechanism. The ring world might have detected the battle and is responding. Can we use it to our advantage? Riel asked. If we can trigger a localized overload, it might disable the remaining Jar ships, Olin suggested. Riel nodded. Do it. Prepare to transfer the necessary energy from the Seeker's weapon systems. The crew worked frantically to reroute power, synchronizing the Seeker's systems with the ancient ring worlds. As the energy buildup reached its peak, Riel gave the order. Initiate the overload sequence, he commanded. The ring world responded, its structure glowing with a brilliant light as energy surged through it. A shockwave emanated from the ring, engulfing the Jar ships and causing their systems to short-circuit. Jar ships are disabled, Olan confirmed. We're clear to escape. Engage FTL drive, Riel ordered. Let's get out of here. The Seeker's engines roared to life, propelling the ship into hyperspace and away from the conflict. The crew let out a collective sigh of relief as the ship stabilized. Good work, everyone, Riel said, his voice tinged with exhaustion. We've bought ourselves some time. Kez approached Riel, her expression serious. Captain, what's our next move? The Jar won't forget this. Riel nodded. We need to return to Lorath space and report to the High Council. They need to know everything that's happened here. Olin interjected, Captain, the data we've collected from the ring world is invaluable. It could change everything. Riel's antennae twitched. Let's hope the Council sees it that way. Prepare the data for transmission. We'll need all the evidence we can get to justify our actions. As the Seeker hurtled through hyperspace, Riel knew their journey was far from over. The confrontation with the Jar had escalated their mission to a new level of urgency and danger, but the discoveries they had made could reshape their understanding of the galaxy and their place within it.
The tension on the ship remained high, with the crew on constant alert. They had survived the encounter with the jar, but the implications of their findings, and the potential backlash from the High Council, weighed heavily on Riel's mind. We're not out of the woods yet, he said quietly, more to himself than anyone else. But we're on the right path. The Seeker of Truth emerged from hyperspace, the familiar stars of Lorath space twinkling against the void. Captain Riel sat on the bridge, his mind racing with the implications of their recent discoveries and the confrontation with the Jar. They had survived, but the challenges ahead were immense. Captain, we've established a secure connection with Lorath Prime, Olan reported, his voice steady. The High Council is awaiting our report. Transmit all data, Riel ordered. They need to see everything, every scan, every log entry. We need to make them understand the significance of what we found. Kez, the first officer, approached Riel. Do you think they'll believe us, Captain? They have to, Riel replied. The evidence speaks for itself. If they don't, we're looking at more than just a personal failure. This is about the future of our civilization. As the data was transmitted, the Seeker's crew worked to assess the damage from their encounter with the Jar. Engineers moved through the ship, repairing critical systems and ensuring the Seeker was ready for whatever came next. Shields are back to full capacity, an engineer reported. Hull integrity is stable, but we'll need dockyard repairs for the more severe damage. Good work, Riel said. We need to be ready for anything. An incoming message from the High Council interrupted their preparations. Captain Riel, this is Arch Scholar Elan. You are to report to the Council Chambers immediately upon docking. We will discuss your findings and actions then. Riel acknowledged the order, feeling a mix of anticipation and anxiety. Prepare to dock at Lorith Prime, he instructed. Let's get this over with. The Seeker glided into the docking bay at Lorath Prime, the crew moving swiftly to secure the ship. Riel, accompanied by Olin and Kez, made his way to the Council Chambers, the weight of their mission pressing down on him. The Council Chamber was imposing, its high ceilings and ornate carvings reflecting the Lorath's dedication to knowledge and order. Arch Scholar Elen and the other Council members sat in a semicircle, their expressions unreadable. Captain Riel, you may present your findings, Elin said, her tone neutral. Riel stepped forward, activating the hollow display. Esteemed council members, our mission led us to the discovery of an ancient human battleship and a colossal ring world. The technology we found is far beyond our current capabilities. We also encountered the Jar, who claimed the ring world as their territory and demanded we surrender our findings. The hollow display projected the detailed scans and data collected from the ring world and the battleship. The council members examined the information closely, murmuring among themselves. Ilan raised a hand for silence. Captain, your findings are indeed remarkable. However, your unauthorized FTL jump and subsequent confrontation with the Jar are serious breaches of protocol. You have put the Seeker and its crew at great risk. Riel stood firm. With respect, Arch Scholar, the potential benefits of our discoveries far outweigh the risks. The technology and knowledge we've uncovered could revolutionize our understanding of the galaxy and our place in it. The Council deliberated in hushed tones, their faces reflecting a mix of skepticism and intrigue. Finally, Elan spoke again. We will take your findings under advisement. In the meantime, the Seeker is to remain docked for a thorough inspection. You and your crew will be confined to the station pending the Council's decision. Riel bowed slightly. Thank you, Arch Scholar. We await your decision. Back on the Seeker, the crew gathered to discuss the Council's reaction. They seemed interested, but they're also cautious, Kez said. We did break a lot of rules. They'll see the value in what we found, Riel replied. They have to. As days turned into weeks, the crew remained on the station, their frustration growing. They had risked everything to bring back invaluable knowledge, yet they were left waiting, uncertain of their future. One evening, Olan approached Riel in the observation deck. Captain, I've been thinking about the data we collected. There's still so much to analyze. We could make breakthroughs even here on the station. Riel nodded. You're right. We can't just sit idle. Let's set up a temporary lab and continue our work. With the Council's permission, the Seeker's crew established a makeshift research lab on the station. They continued to analyze the human technology, uncovering new insights and preparing to present even more compelling evidence to the Council. Captain, look at this, Olin said one day, pointing to a schematic on his hollow display. This power generation system, if we can replicate it, 
we could increase our energy output tenfold. Grail's eyes widened. This is exactly what we need. Prepare a full report. We'll present this to the Council as soon as possible. As the days passed, the crew's work in the lab began to bear fruit. They were ready to present their new findings, hoping to finally convince the Council of the importance of their mission. But Riel knew that the final decision rested with the Council. Their fate, and the future of their discoveries, hung in the balance. Captain Riel and his team stood before the High Council once more, their latest findings prepared for presentation. The Council Chamber was silent as the arch-scholar Elin reviewed the new data, her expression unreadable. Captain Riel, she began, your unauthorized actions have placed us in a difficult position. However, the significance of your discoveries cannot be ignored. The Council has decided to establish a new institute dedicated to the study of human technology and culture. Riel felt a surge of relief and pride. Thank you, Arch-scholar. We're honored to continue this work, Ilan continued. You will head this institute, Captain. Your expertise and first-hand experience are invaluable. You will gather the finest Lorath minds to join you, Riel bowed slightly. We accept this responsibility with gratitude. We will ensure the Institute honors the legacy of the human civilization. The new Institute was established on Lorath Prime, its state-of-the-art facilities designed to accommodate extensive research and development. Riel and his team moved quickly to set up laboratories, data analysis rooms, and archives for the vast amount of information they had collected. Olan, coordinate with the engineering teams to set up the AI research lab, Riel instructed. We need to start decoding those subroutines as soon as possible. On it, Captain, Olin replied, heading off to oversee the setup. Kez approached Riel with a list of potential recruits. We've compiled a list of top scientists and engineers who would be an asset to the Institute. Here are their profiles. Riel scanned the list, nodding in approval. These are excellent choices. Send out invitations immediately. We need the best minds working on this. As the Institute began to take shape, the initial challenges became apparent. The human technology was complex, often frustratingly so, and the cultural artifacts were difficult to interpret. But the team remained dedicated, driven by the potential breakthroughs that lay within their grasp. Captain, we've made a significant breakthrough with the hyperdrive schematic, an engineer reported. We believe we can replicate the design with some modifications to our current technology. Excellent work. Riel said. Begin a prototype immediately. This could revolutionize our space travel capabilities. In addition to technological advancements, the Institute also focused on understanding human culture and philosophy. Artifacts from the battleship and ring world provided glimpses into the values and beliefs of the ancient humans. Look at this, a cultural analyst said, showing Riel a hollow display of ancient human texts. These writings suggest a society deeply committed to exploration and knowledge. There's a kinship in their drive that mirrors our own. Riel nodded thoughtfully. Understanding their culture will help us appreciate the full scope of their achievements. Continue your analysis and document everything. As word of the Institute's work spread, public interest grew. Scholars and researchers from across Lorath space sought to contribute to the groundbreaking efforts and collaborative projects with other Lorath institutions flourished. One day, Riel addressed a group of new recruits. Welcome to the Institute for Human Studies. Our mission is to honor and understand the legacy of the human civilization. Your work here will not only advance our knowledge, but also pay tribute to those who came before us. The recruits listened intently, inspired by Riel's dedication and vision. The Institute became a hub of innovation and discovery, its influence spreading throughout Lorath society. Captain, We've successfully replicated the human power generation system, Olan announced one morning. This will increase our energy output tenfold as predicted. Riel's eyes lit up with excitement. This is a monumental achievement. Prepare a demonstration for the Council. They need to see the tangible benefits of our work. The demonstration was a resounding success. The Council members watched in awe as the new power system generated unprecedented levels of energy, confirming the value of the Institute's research. Captain Riel, Arch Scholar Elin said afterward, your institute has already begun to transform our society. The Council commends your dedication and achievements, Riel bowed. Thank you, Arch Scholar. This is only the beginning. 
we have much more to uncover and understand. Despite the Institute's growing success, Riel knew there were still many challenges ahead. The complexity of the human technology and the vastness of their cultural heritage meant that the work would be ongoing, requiring relentless effort and unwavering commitment. But as Riel looked out over the bustling Institute, filled with some of the brightest minds in Lorath society, he felt a profound sense of purpose. They were not just uncovering the past, they were building a bridge to the future, guided by the legacy of a long-lost civilization. The Institute for Human Studies was a buzz with activity. Captain Riel moved through the main lab, observing his team as they worked on decoding human technology. Their latest breakthrough was the successful replication of the human hyperdrive, a feat that promised to revolutionize Lorath space travel. Captain, we're ready for a test flight, Olin said, his voice filled with excitement. The prototype is installed on one of our scout ships, Riel nodded. Excellent. Prepare the ship for launch. We'll monitor the test from here. The scout ship, equipped with the replicated hyperdrive, launched from the Institute's spaceport. The entire team watched the telemetry closely as the ship accelerated and engaged the hyperdrive. The display showed a smooth transition into hyperspace, the new drive operating flawlessly. We did it, Kez said, her voice tinged with awe. This changes everything. The successful test was celebrated throughout the Institute. The breakthrough validated months of hard work and opened new possibilities for exploration and expansion. Begin preparations for integrating the new drive into our fleet, Riel instructed. We need to start with our exploration vessels and gradually upgrade the rest. As the team focused on the hyperdrive project, another group was working on deciphering the AI subroutines found in the human data core. The complexity of the AI technology was daunting, but the potential benefits were immense. Captain, we've made progress with the AI subroutines, said Loran, the head of the AI research team. We've managed to isolate a learning algorithm that adapts to new inputs in real time. Show me, Riel said, following Loran to the AI lab. The demonstration was impressive. The AI responded to new data inputs with remarkable speed and accuracy, adjusting its parameters and improving its performance without human intervention. This could revolutionize our AI systems, Riel said, clearly impressed. Continue your work and document every step. We need to understand this technology thoroughly before we integrate it into our systems. Despite the successes, the Institute also faced setbacks. One morning, a critical experiment in the power generation lab went awry, resulting in an explosion that damaged equipment and injured several researchers. Medical team to the power lab, now, Riel shouted, rushing to the scene. The injured researchers were quickly treated, but the incident cast a shadow over the Institute. The damaged equipment would take weeks to repair, and the setback threatened to derail the power generation project. And we can't afford delays like this, Kez said, frustration evident in her voice. We're on the brink of major advancements. We need to ensure safety protocols are strictly followed, Riel replied. Our work is too important to be jeopardized by avoidable accidents. The incident prompted a thorough review of all safety procedures and a renewed focus on ensuring the well-being of the research team. Riel knew that setbacks were part of the process, but he was determined to minimize their impact. As the Institute continued its work, public debate about the implications of the discoveries grew. Some Lorath citizens were excited about the potential advancements, while others were concerned about the risks and the ethical considerations of using human technology. Captain, there's growing public interest and debate about our work, said Kira, the Institute's public relations officer. We need to address their concerns and highlight the benefits. Riel nodded. Prepare a comprehensive report for public release. We need to be transparent about our findings and their potential impact on our society. The report detailed the Institute's achievements and the safeguards in place to ensure the responsible use of human technology. It was well received, helping to assuage some public concerns and garner broader support for the Institute's mission. One evening, as Riel reviewed the latest progress reports, Olin approached him. Captain, there's something you should see, he said, holding a data tablet. It's a message we decoded from the human data core. It appears to be a distress signal. Riel's eyes widened. A distress signal? From where? It's difficult to pinpoint, but it seems to be coming from deep within the ring world we discovered, Olin explained. It could be from an automated system, or there might be survivors. 
Riel considered the implications. We need to investigate this, prepare a team. This could lead to another significant discovery. Has the team prepared for the new mission? The atmosphere in the Institute was charged with anticipation. The breakthroughs they had achieved were just the beginning, and the potential for new discoveries loomed large. But Riel knew that each step forward brought new challenges. The journey of exploration and understanding was far from over, and the path ahead was fraught with both promise and peril. The Institute for Human Studies continued to thrive, but Captain Riel felt the weight of leadership pressing down on him. The responsibilities and the unending demand for progress were taking a toll on his health. Captain, you need to rest, Kez said one evening, noticing Riel's pallor. You've been working nonstop for weeks. Riel shook his head. There's too much at stake, Kes. We can't afford to slow down. Your health is just as important as our work, Kez insisted. The Institute needs you, but it needs you at your best. Reluctantly, Riel agreed to take a short break. He visited the Institute's medical bay for a routine checkup. The head physician, Dr. Morin, conducted a thorough examination. Captain, your stress levels are dangerously high, Dr. Morin said, his tone serious. You need to take this seriously and allow yourself time to recover. Riel sighed. I know, doctor. I'll try to rest more. Despite his intentions, Riel found it difficult to step back. The Institute was facing new challenges, and his presence felt indispensable. He continued to push himself, driven by a sense of duty and a relentless pursuit of knowledge. Meanwhile, the Institute was also dealing with the issue of leadership succession. Given Riel's health concerns, the Council suggested he start mentoring a successor. Captain, we need to think about the future, Arch Scholar Elan said during a meeting. You've done incredible work, but it's time to consider who will lead after you, Riel nodded. I've been considering it. I'll start mentoring some of our top candidates. He identified several promising researchers within the Institute, including Olin and Kez. He began to spend more time with them, sharing his knowledge and ensuring they were prepared for leadership roles. Olin, you've been instrumental in our breakthroughs, Riel said during one of their mentoring sessions. You have the technical expertise and the dedication needed to lead. Olin looked humbled. Thank you, Captain. I've learned so much from you. Riel also spent time with Kez, discussing the broader vision and strategic planning for the Institute. Your strategic thinking and leadership skills are invaluable, he told her. You're ready to take on more responsibilities. Kez nodded. I appreciate your confidence in me, Captain. I'll do my best to live up to it. As Riel worked to prepare his successors, he also reconnected with his family. His brother, Darian, visited him at the Institute, bringing a sense of grounding and perspective. Riel, you've accomplished so much, Darian said, looking around the Institute with admiration. But don't forget to take care of yourself. I know, Darian, Riel replied. It's just hard to step back when there's so much to be done, Darian smiled. Remember why you started this journey. Your passion for discovery should also include living well. These visits with family helped Riel to reflect on his journey and the importance of balancing his dedication to the Institute with his personal well-being. One evening, as he was preparing to leave his office, Kira, the Institute's public relations officer, approached him. Captain, I've been working on a public outreach program to educate people about our work. I think it could help build broader support. Riel looked over the proposal. This is excellent, Kira. It's important that we keep the public informed and engaged. Kira nodded. We can arrange public lectures, interactive exhibits, and even virtual tours of our labs. Let's move forward with this, Riel said. It will help people understand the significance of our work and the potential it holds for all of us. As the public outreach program launched, it garnered positive feedback and increased support for the Institute's mission. Riel felt a renewed sense of purpose, knowing that their work was inspiring others and contributing to the greater good. Despite the progress, Riel's health continued to be a concern. Dr. Moran insisted on more frequent checkups and strongly recommended that Riel delegate more responsibilities. Captain, you need to trust your team, Dr. Moran said firmly. They're capable and prepared. Let them take some of the burden, Riel nodded. You're right. I need to ensure the Institute can thrive without me at the helm every moment. He began to delegate more tasks to Olan, Kez, and other capable leaders within the Institute. This not only helped to alleviate his workload, but also empowered his team to take greater ownership of their projects. 
As Riel gradually stepped back, he focused on a final personal project related to the human discoveries. It was a way to continue contributing without the constant pressure of leadership. One evening, Olin approached him with exciting news. Captain, we've decoded more of the distress signal. It's leading us to a specific location within the ring world. Riel felt a surge of excitement. This could be the breakthrough we've been waiting for. Prepare an expedition. We need to investigate this immediately. The Institute prepared for the new mission, the atmosphere charged with anticipation and determination. Riel knew that the journey was far from over, but he was confident in his team's ability to carry it forward. The Institute for Human Studies was buzzing with anticipation. The decoded distress signal from the Human Data Corps pointed to a specific location within the ring world. Captain Riel, despite stepping back from daily operations, was deeply involved in preparing the expedition. Captain, we're ready, Olen said, standing at attention. The team is assembled and the equipment is loaded. Riel nodded, feeling a surge of excitement. Good. This could be a major breakthrough. Let's move out. The expedition team boarded a shuttle and made their way to the ring world. As they approached the designated coordinates, the sheer scale of the structure once again left them in awe. The location was a massive facility, half buried and shrouded in mystery. Landing sequence initiated, Kez announced, piloting the shuttle with precision. We should be on the ground in a few minutes. The shuttle touched down smoothly, and the team disembarked, ready to explore the facility. They moved cautiously, scanning for any signs of danger or activity. Energy readings are stable, Olin reported. There's definitely some sort of power source still active inside. Let's proceed, Riel said, leading the way. The team entered the facility, their lights cutting through the darkness. The interior was a labyrinth of corridors and chambers filled with ancient technology and artifacts. They followed the signal, which led them deeper into the structure. Captain, over here, Kez called out, pointing to a large, sealed door. The signal is coming from behind this door. Riel examined the door, noting the intricate control panel. Can we open it? Olin stepped forward, working on the panel. It's a sophisticated lock, but I think I can override it. After a few tense moments, the door slid open with a hiss, revealing a vast chamber filled with advanced machinery. At the center of the room was a large console, still active and displaying complex data streams. This must be the control center, Riel said, approaching the console. Let's see what we can find. Olin interfaced with the console, decoding the information. Captain, this is incredible. The facility was designed as a research hub for advanced AI and FTL technology. There are logs here detailing experiments and findings that could propel our understanding forward by decades. Riel's eyes widened. Download everything. We need to analyze this data back at the Institute. As they worked, a soft hum filled the chamber, and a holographic projection flickered to life. It was an image of a human scientist, speaking in an ancient language. Olin quickly translated the message. Welcome, explorers. You have discovered one of our greatest achievements. This facility contains the collective knowledge of our civilization's most advanced research. Use it wisely. The message ended, leaving the team in stunned silence. The implications were profound, an entire archive of human advancements waiting to be uncovered. We've hit the jackpot, Kez said, her voice filled with awe. This changes everything. Riel nodded. This is a new era for us. Let's get this data back to the Institute. We have a lot of work ahead. Back at the Institute, the team began the monumental task of analyzing the downloaded data. The findings were groundbreaking, offering insights into AI development, FTL travel, and energy generation that far surpassed their current technology. Captain, these AI protocols are incredibly advanced, Loran reported. We can integrate them into our systems to create more efficient and adaptive AI. Proceed with caution, Riel advised. We need to fully understand these protocols before implementing them. The Institute's work attracted even more attention, leading to collaborative projects with other Lorath institutions and increased funding. Public interest soared as news of the discovery spread, bringing a sense of unity and purpose to Lorath society. One day, Riel addressed the Institute's staff. We stand at the threshold of a new era. The knowledge we've uncovered will propel us forward, but we must honor the legacy of the humans who came before us. Our mission is to explore, understand, and use this knowledge for the betterment of all.
The staff responded with enthusiastic applause, inspired by Riel's vision and leadership. The Institute became a beacon of innovation and discovery, its influence extending throughout the galaxy. Riel spent more time mentoring Olin and Kez, ensuring they were ready to take on greater leadership roles. He also continued his personal project, delving deeper into the human data and uncovering more secrets. Captain, we've managed to replicate another piece of human technology, Olin announced one afternoon. It's a new type of energy generator that's much more efficient than our current models. Creel smiled, feeling a sense of accomplishment. Excellent work, Olin. This is exactly the kind of progress we need. Let's begin testing it immediately. As the Institute continued to thrive, Riel knew he had made the right decision in stepping back and allowing his team to take the lead. The future was bright, filled with endless possibilities and the promise of new discoveries. But he also knew that the journey was far from over. There were still many challenges ahead, and the path forward would require dedication, perseverance, and a commitment to the values that had guided them thus far. Prepare for the next phase, Riel said, looking out over the bustling Institute. We're just getting started. Captain Riel stood in his office, looking out at the bustling activity of the Institute for Human Studies. The Institute had become a center of innovation, its work impacting not only Lorath society, but also the wider galaxy. The breakthroughs in AI, FTL travel, and energy generation had transformed their technological landscape. Riel reflected on the journey that had brought them here. From the initial discovery of the ancient human battleship to the establishment of the Institute, every step had been a challenge, but also a triumph. He felt a deep sense of pride in his team and the work they had accomplished. Captain, we've completed the first full-scale test of the new energy generator, Olin said, entering the office. The results are even better than expected. We can roll out the technology to our entire fleet. Riel nodded. Excellent work, Olin. This is a significant milestone. Prepare a report for the Council. They need to see the impact of our discoveries. Olin smiled. I'll get right on it. This is going to revolutionize our energy infrastructure. As Olin left, Kez entered, carrying a data tablet. Captain, we've received a message from the High Council. They want you to present the Institute's latest achievements at the upcoming Interstellar Symposium. Riel raised an eyebrow. The Interstellar Symposium, that's a significant platform. It's a great opportunity to showcase our work and build stronger relationships with other civilizations. Kez nodded. It's also a chance to highlight the collaborative projects we've started with other species. Our work is becoming a model for interstellar cooperation. Riel took the tablet, reviewing the Council's message. Prepare the presentation. We'll need to highlight our key achievements and the broader implications for galactic progress. Over the next few days, the Institute buzzed with preparations for the symposium. Teams worked on refining their findings and compiling data that would be presented to representatives from across the galaxy. The excitement was palpable. On the day of the symposium, Riel stood before a packed auditorium. The audience included scientists, leaders, and scholars from various civilizations, all eager to hear about the Institute's work. Esteemed colleagues and guests, Riel began, it is an honor to share the advancements we've made at the Institute for Human Studies. Our journey began with the discovery of ancient human technology, which has since transformed our understanding and capabilities. He detailed their breakthroughs, from the replicated hyperdrive to the advanced AI protocols and the new energy generation systems. The audience listened intently, their reactions ranging from awe to curiosity. We have also forged new partnerships with other civilizations, Riel continued. Together, we are exploring the vast potential of our collective knowledge and working towards a future where technological and cultural exchange drives progress. After the presentation, Riel fielded questions from the audience. Representatives from various civilizations expressed interest in collaboration, eager to learn from the Institute's findings and contribute their own knowledge. Captain Riel, one representative said, your work exemplifies the spirit of exploration and cooperation. We look forward to working together to further our mutual goals. Riel thanked the representative, feeling a sense of accomplishment. The symposium was a resounding success, solidifying the Institute's reputation as a leader in technological and cultural advancement. Back at the Institute, the team celebrated their success. Riel watched his colleagues feeling a profound sense of fulfillment. They had come a long way, 
and their work was making a real difference. Later that evening, Riel sat with Olin and Kez in the Institute's garden, a serene space designed for reflection and relaxation. The stars twinkled overhead, a reminder of the vastness of the galaxy and the endless possibilities that lay ahead. We've achieved so much, Olin said, his voice filled with pride. But there's still so much more to explore and understand. Kez nodded. And we're just getting started. The legacy of the human civilization has opened up new horizons for us. It's a journey that will continue for generations. Riel smiled, feeling the weight of his responsibilities lifting. I'm confident in the future of the Institute. You both are ready to take on more leadership roles. The work will continue, and it will thrive. Olin and Kez exchanged glances, their expressions determined. We won't let you down, Captain, Kez said. We'll carry forward the mission with the same dedication and passion. Riel leaned back, looking up at the stars. The journey had been challenging, but it had also been incredibly rewarding. The discoveries they had made were not just about technological advancement. They were about understanding and honoring a legacy that had once reached for the stars. We've honored the past and built a bridge to the future, Riel said quietly. The work we've done here is just the beginning. There's a whole galaxy out there, waiting to be explored. The night was filled with a sense of peace and anticipation. The Institute stood as a testament to what could be achieved through determination, collaboration, and a relentless pursuit of knowledge. As Riel watched the stars, he knew that the future was bright, filled with endless possibilities and the promise of new discoveries.